Okay, everybody, welcome to the class tonight. It's a pleasure to be here with you. So we will be starting today. Actually, we start the last week of class. So, and uh, of course, that is the question for tonight. So if you want to move on and uh, you should be doing the exercise 4.1. That is going to be like this. You need to check the chart and then check about the generations here. And that's it, that's the only thing. So tomorrow will be the class 22, Monday 23, Tuesday 24, and the 25th class is going to be on Wednesday. Remember also that you will be receiving the survey for INSPORP. So that is something that we need to do on the last class together okay you also might receive the the survey just for the teacher so that you can do it yourself but the one for in support that is for us to do it together also remember that for monday or tuesday at least we need to finish everything in the platform so if you still have some delay please it's important to move on okay before we move on of course we're going to check the attendance. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Ok, José Osmín. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibeth Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Okay, Irena, I got it. And Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. Okay, so we're going to then start with the class tonight. Okay, got you also, Fernando. Let's see. Okay. I'm here. Uh, I did. I, I don't know if you check the assistant. I'm just finishing, but of course I can check it out right now. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Perfect. So let's continue. Okay, we will continue checking how to manage multi-generation teams at the workplace. Let me just check. Yeah, this article is interesting. So let's see how it goes. So how to manage a multi-generational team? It says to realize the benefits of a generationally diverse workforce. We need to learn how to appreciate our unique preferences, habits, and behavior, okay? So, and says, uh, well, we're not gonna check it out. Let's see, um, Heidi, could you please start with the first three paragraphs? Sure, teacher. Good. A few weeks ago, my dad and I had a discussion about respecting the workplace. We talked about how difficult it is to manage cross generations when you are much older or younger than your team. My dad didn't 
understand why his direct reports responded to his voicemails with emails instead of calling him back. Where, where is, yeah, where whereas is. I didn't understand his preference for phone calls when the same information could be communicated via text. Our disagreement should lie on a challenge that is common in today's workforce, learning how, how to collaborate with and appreciate the unique preferences, habits, and behaviors of colleagues who grew up in different times than ourselves. Good, what do you get from this? That this happens, it's, it's, uh, it's a problem of communication. Um, uh, older generations are not likely to, to use uh, technology or, or or communicating about uh, uh, through this through these tools, right? So that's that's the um, the disagreement, maybe not disagreement. Those are different kinds of communication, and and well, well, the boss has to understand and has to has to deal with that. Okay, very good. That happens actually. Yeah, that is true. I mean. Imagine that her dad, I mean, it was like, why don't you call in person, right? So personally, it's better. It's uh -huh, better to, to do it by, by call and you say, you know, this is happening, whatever. But for the other person that was younger, of course, it was like, why? I mean, I can send an email and that's it, right? It's the same information. But they had different points of view. And that happens. That happens, of course, not only with different generations, but also within the same generation. That's true. Good, so let's see some uh, words here. Let's see. Uh, where is, what is that? Hey, anybody? You can check dictionaries or whatever you want. I don't know. So this is like on the other hand, uh, like in a different point of view, something like that. Okay, and let's see, there was another one. Um, I just don't remember what is it, but there was another one. Okay, anyways, I did not find it. So the next three paragraphs are going to be for Juan Miguel Brand. Could you please help us? Okay. Sorry, uh, the sad truth, okay? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, the sad truth is that age gaps between managers like my dad and their team members like me can hinder or hinder? Hinder. Can hinder or mutual respect for one another. When we fundamentally can relate to someone due to generational gaps, we often resort to using harmful stereotypes and blame solvable problems on each other instead of working to understand and value the difference that distance us. Our job performance and productivity are negatively impacted as a result. To get guidance around how we can move past this and realize the, money, the many benefits of cross-generational work, I spoke with my professor, Megan Gerhardt, Director of Leadership Development at Miami University's former School of Business and author of Gentelligence. Okay, what do you get from this? Uh, I think uh, sometimes uh, because in my cases like this, uh, maybe sometimes you call to other people in other department uh, and people just uh, respond you with an email instead of a call. Um, at the beginning, it was like, a, okay, why these people don't, don't, don't call me back? But 
uh, like like all the readings uh, tests, uh, they are uh, gen gen Xers, okay? okay, from twenty to thir twenty to thirteen years old, th so to thirty years old. Sorry. So uh, there are many differences, okay? Uh, and that's what uh, the reading says about uh, try to understand and try to uh, um, to don't be or don't feel uh, like uh, you value nothing or something like that, uh, but uh trying to think that uh, the people is on another situation another level another obviously generation and uh, at the end uh, i decide to myself i i decide to 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 tell uh, myself hey uh, there are many kinds of communication and this is one of one of uh, the most common in this kind of, of uh, work. So just respect to the other people's uh, manner or the way to, to answer you instead of, a, um, how to say this, thinking about a, um, how to say this? Um, thinking about a, you're not important to them or something like, like this. I don't know if, if it's perfect. Yeah, that is fine. Yeah, I mean, that happens. I mean, instead, I mean, these kind of differences sometimes are going to lead us to maybe have an argument with somebody else's because we don't understand that they have a different point of view with different generational aspects and habits, right? But if we, for first of all, we are able to understand that they, I mean, they grew in a different environment and that for them is a different point of view only. And then we understand and support and take advantage of that one is going to be better than actually have an argument with them. So that's why this is of course very important. Uh, let's see. I don't think there are no words. Uh, Hinder, what is Hinder? No, I don't know what is Hinder. Okay, so it's like instead, uh, I mean, it's like not showing the respect to the other person in this case, because we're talking about respect. Instead of that one, we need to respect each other, right? Uh, the other one is due to, what is due to? Because of something. Very good. So because of, because you, you provide like a reason, right? And let's see. I don't think there is any other. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna check is the challenge. So that's going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Could you please help us with that? Yes, teacher, just one moment because I'm switching to my computer right now. Of course, take your time. Just, no, just a little second. I'm okay. ready, I guess. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm ready. Okay. Uh, number one challenge, harmful stereotypes. For the first time in the modern history, there are five generations in the workforce. Apparently, we each exhibit unique personality traits and values. The silent generation born in 1925 to 1945, loyal but traditional. Baby boomers, 1946 to 1964. 
collaborated, but averse to change. Uh, Generation X, 1965 to 1980. Independent, but bleak. Millennials, 1981 to 2000, driving, but entitled. Generation Z, 2001, 2020. Progressive, but disloyal. This generation are for the most part problematic. Her heart told me the first step to overcome age bias and developing a mutual respect for another is to debunk them. Many of generational conversations in the news today really rely, rely, rely on false stereotypes and click by headlines rather than taking the time to understand the generation different difference that are a part of our generational identities. Your heart said, when we are saying negative or over, 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 overacting, 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 characteristic, characteristics to each group, we imply that their values, beliefs, and goals are fundamentally planned. Very good. What did you get from this? Um, well, uh, this is a, a little explanation about uh, those um, generation. So the first one is silence, loyal but traditional. So that's mean that maybe they don't like the change or maybe want to do the something like the old school. And the second one, the baby boomers, they are collaborate but averse to change. That's similar to the to the to the silent generation. And for generation X, independent public, that's um, I am that's um, um, well, um, that means like they only um, they only yeah, bleak is like an adjective that is like exposed, so they are something like that. This is like independent that only they only want to do what they are they are thinking, I guess. Okay. And millennials driving but entitled. So um, that's is like is like when you say um you can handle those people, but you have to to show them. Uh, why you are driving to, to that way. Okay. And the last one is progressive, but is loyal is that those people or those generation that maybe only want to, to, to learn something and put in practice and uh, doesn't matter what the companies invest on me, of them. So they gave us a little explanation of those uh, kind of uh, generation. And then gave us a, a little uh, extra information that is really important to know when, they, when we assign negative or overjecting characteristics in each group. So it's I guess that is just extra extra information about the the first part. Okay, very good, perfect. Thank you.
So yes, I mean, challenge harmful stereotypes. So as we were discussing, it's good to understand the differences between one and the other generation, but it's not good to stereotype people, right? Because we can say that everybody that were born in these years is like this. Of course, it's an idea on what they want, what they uh, would like to do in the company, but um, it's, not, it's not like that one. So let's check some vocabulary. A traits, what is traits? The way you uh, behave with other people. Very good. The way you treat other people. Nice. And what is to be loyal? Uh, teacher, um, just one thing. Uh, in the context, personality traits is like characteristics. Uh, yes, the way they they actually behave and treat other people. So you know, everybody has their own personality, and they will be able to behave in some way. Okay. Okay. What is logical? Anybody? I know that you know. I know what that means, but maybe <laughs> how to explain. Um, it's mostly something mostly. Um, someone lawyer, so someone who will follow follow you till the end of time. Very good. So it's a. Uh, the person, the people that they be with you in good and bad times, right? That is like loyal. It doesn't matter if you have problems, it's going to stay with you. To belong good. to someone or something by your own choice. Yeah, that is, is you're there because you really want to be there, right? Good, the other one is averse. What is to be averse? The, mm, the the opposite to willing to <laughs> very good it's the opposite of being willing to so you don't like you are not willing to do something good we check that bleak is like being exposed in this context and the other one says driven and entitled do you remember what is entitled Entitled mm -hmm. is like under the law. Okay. So in this context, it's like people that are or stray. Uh, I'm sorry. Correctly. Okay. Very good. So in this case, it's like when they believe that they deserve more, right? That they they would like to have more privileges, something like that. Okay, the other one is disloyal. What is to be disloyal? The opposite of loyal. <laughs> Definitely, the opposite of uh, this, uh, I mean, it's a person that whenever something bad happens, says goodbye, my friend. It was a pleasure. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Let me see. Uh, debunk, what is debunk? Well okay that one is going to be some like when you expose something that is not true in this case speaking about stereotypes i mean some stereotypes that when you analyze are not like that, you are not going to be like the, uh, the whole stereotype that you will find there. So that is to debunk. Uh, the other one is rely. What is to rely? OK. 
trust. To trust, very good, nice. The other one is um, clickbait. What is clickbait? Okay, so clickbait is the action, you know, this is very something from the uh, internet. Clickbait is when some companies attract people to click on something. So the name of that one is called clickbait. In this case, it's talking about clickbait headlines. So people are attracted to follow only the, the big letters on the top, but they are not able to, to research a little bit more. So that is it. And let's see, identities. What is an identity? Maybe different Maybe. Personali personalities. Okay. Different personalities, yes, something like that one, right? So remember that when we are teenagers, we are looking for our own identity. So we get related with some things and we don't like some other things. And we're looking for that one. At this time, of course, we know who we are. Okay, so we have our identities. Uh, overarching, what is that? Something general? Something general, it might be, yeah. Overarching, well, the most of the time is used as comprehensive, but in this case, if you read this, or overarching characteristics, meaning that maybe uh, we assign negative or too many characteristics to each group. So it, it refers to that one. There are too many things, and then you uh, are going to probably get some stereotype on that one. Okay, what is to imply? Put in practice. To put in practice, okay. We imply that we believe that that is implied, as we say, right? So we believe that that is part of radio, in this case of people. So these characteristics that we're talking about if somebody says, for example, I was born in this year, then we imply that that person is like that and that is not good, right? So we imply that their values, beliefs, what is beliefs? All the things, uh, things in general, okay? Um, that you believe that are correct, or are uh, right, um, they are like your values, uh, your personal values, your um, religious, I don't know how to say. Religious. Religious uh, way to think, way to believe in God or something that you believe, uh, I think. Okay, very good. That is it. Belief is something that actually you believe, right? Even though when there is no validation on that one. Good. Flaw, what is that? Uh, COVID, something damaged. Something damaged, very good. Something that is not perfect. So we're talking about that if we imply everything that is said in the stereotype, we are going then to imply that uh, all their values, beliefs, and goals are not are not good, are damaged, are not are not perfect. So we need to get to know people, right? There is value in educating ourselves in their realities. Different generations have faced throughout their careers. 
definitely, this is so true, right? Everybody has lived different things in different uh, situations because the economy, the politics in a country, uh, the country where you live, it was totally different. So definitely that is going to mark the way that we are. The other two paragraphs are going to be for Giselle. Is it possible for you, Giselle, or maybe not? Okay. okay. Uh, Danny. Yeah, sure. In reality, we, what we value is individual, as individual is often influenced by event completely out of our control dictated by our experiences, experiences at the beginning of our lives and our careers. Each generation entered by entered the workforce under certain conditions, which ultimately helped to shape our sense of purpose, our differences, and our driver for success. For example, a recent college graduate who started their first job during the pandemic and, and is accustomed to a remote setup might put a high value on flexible work and prefer to communicate digitally. On the other hand, some, know, some who entered the workforce in in 20 in 2008 uh, right uh, during the great recession might value job security and routine and prefer to work a predictable nine to five schedule five days a week very the good problem, uh, yeah, yeah. that is fine uh, or let okay. me check if that is too long yeah that's uh, not good okay <laughs> okay Okay, so uh, what did you get from this? Um, well, uh, here I, I, I got that um, we are uh, influenced whether or not, or we want or not by the event that happened in the, in, in the life. <laughs> uh, for example, the pandemic, right? <laughs> we, now we have, um, a preference uh, for a job, for example, working from home, right? And uh, we are, uh, we you, we are used to this, and we want to continue like that. Or uh, someone who who are used to go to the office and work there all the time, and is that is that they want in it's well, right? because they are used to, um, due to something that they they live, I don't know. <laughs> Very good, that is true. I mean, uh, everybody have, we have lived different situations, different conditions. I mean, even if we analyze more in deep, if you live in San Salvador and our other people live in San Miguel, even during the same time, it's, it's going to be different. The impact that the environment goes into these people. So that happens. So in general, the scientists, they have tried to identify that, uh, like the influence that the world has into one person and then try to relate that one to work behaviors, right? So here in this one, I don't think there are many words to be honest. Okay, so the other two paragraphs are going to be for Jose Osmin. Is it possible for you, Jose Osmin? Okay, uh, Ada Cáceres. Okay, teacher. The world are outside? Uh, yes? No, the problem is that. Oh, sorry, teacher. Uh, the problem 
the problem is that A, stereotypes go a uh, step two for assuming that every person has reacted to the mile, miles, miles, milestone, milestone. Or the, the milestone of the generation in the cell ways. There is a assumption of the false and K Weka work it, feel silhouette of silhouette. Silhouette. Silhouette and you before they everything is step on the office. This is this in turn affects performance at 27 a 17 and a, a study published by the new the AI age for it that employees three patterns. So you are in mute right now, Ada. Sorry, teacher. Okay. For uh, that, the employees, they are trained be a gay based stereotype concerning one performance are less able, able to communicate and they current job. This oriented to world long their two profession goals are ultimate just adjusted psychologic. Um, the, uh, for me, I think the, the problem, the stereotype, uh, the assuming the is the problem for the uh, the goals, the the years. Um, only that picture. Okay, perfect. So yes, actually it says that right? the problem is that age stereotypes go a step too far in assuming that every person has reacted to the milestones of their generation in the same ways. So that is probably the most basic there. So we assume that everybody has reacted in the same way, but of course we're different. Let's check some words. Um, what is to assume? Uh, it's kind of pretend you already know something. Very good. So when you believe that you know without knowing actually the facts, right? Uh, milestones, what is that? Okay, milestones is like, how can I explain that one? It's like when you complete, uh, uh, how to say this? You have a, a, a project, okay? Uh, the project has many phases. Phases, phases uh huh? Okay, many phases. And each phase that you complete is a milestone, okay? Not a, a little step, but a group of little steps in order to complete a phase or to complete a milestone or to have a milestone, sorry. Very good, perfect. Actually, it's exactly that. It's like an event. In this case, we're talking about generations. So there are events that has... That marks this history. Exactly. So has leave you a mark and then you will be able to, I mean, act in different ways. But that's the thing though. Even we have, even if we have lived the same milestones, probably it's not. We are not going to be exactly the same, of course. Okay, uh, silo. What is that? Okay, that is a kind of a strange word, right? But actually, it's very easy. Silo is like isolated that you feel by yourself, not part of the group. That is it. So it says actually it can make workers feel silhouetted and judged. What is to be judged?
judge maybe uh, the way, uh, no, the thoughts of people about you, maybe, or Very the good. ideas, the ideas oh. that people have on you. That is it, right? So, I mean, you do something and they point at you and they, they said you are like this or you did this and this is not correct, whatever. So being judged is, is not good, definitely. Uh, let's see. Yeah, threaten, what is to be threat, threaten. You can say also, what is a threat? Uh, I don't know if it's a if it's a kind of uh, sentence to you, like uh, <clears throat> uh, how to say this when other people. Uh, try to intimidate you and they uh, they told something uh, like this if you do something i will uh, i will fight you and i will uh, punch you okay okay very good good explanation yes threatened or to be threatened is going to be like a menace that is yes, like a man. trying to attack mm -hmm. you. So you believe that it's going to be an attack for you. So good, good. And then it's not that, I guess. Okay. And the last one, I'm going to read that one. Why uh, Gerhard said that we should avoid making assumptions about people based slightly on their age. There is value in educating ourselves on the realities different generations have faced throughout their careers. Understanding these nuances is essential to accepting one another. And it's even more important for those in managerial roles, like my dad in this article, and those who strive to be leaders one day, like me. Okay, so definitely, right? So we say that we cannot stereotype, but it's useful to understand the differences that some generation might have, depending on uh, different things. Maybe the only word here that we can check is this one, strive. What is that one, strive? Um, make an effort, something like that. Of course. Very good. Make an effort to do your best so you can achieve something. Good. So number two says communicate your preferences openly. Okay, that is going to be for, let's see. Uh, Maria Alejandra. Uh, is it possible for you, Maria Alejandra? Not possible. Ivan, is it possible for you, Ivan? Okay, uh, Roxanne. Okay. Communicate your preference openly. Just as we wouldn't expert our action to be accurate, accu accurately understood or universally agree with when we travel to other places. Where Gerhardt said, we should expert, we shouldn't expert or reasons for approaching, approaching, approaching or approaching. working a person or work in particular ways to be clear to open who have grown up and started their professional lives at different points in time. Instead, we should be talking 
openly to one another about or preference, particularly, particularly when it comes to met methods of communications, manager of, managers of multiple generations can set the example by help, helping their team members find ways to clearly communicate with each other. If you have different reports who are both older and younger, that thank, thank you. Ask your employees what kind of interaction feel most comfortable to them. Okay, what did you get from this? Well, uh, in short, it's important to uh, looking for a different ways to share the different opinion. Uh, maybe uh, when you are in a, working in a, a team group in your in your uh, company, for example, you need to looking for the um, pol maybe looking a polite way to share your uh, opinions and try to if you are hurt that that uh, words in other person you need to open your mind and try to translate or understood what they can share us so i imagine that uh, it's both someone who needs to share an opinion and the other hand someone who needs to understand that opinion very good and i'm sorry go ahead yeah it's both open up be open mind in both part very good yeah actually you say something very true i mean you need to be open in both ways i mean not only to listen to other people and try to understand them but also to to speak out i mean sometimes that happens sometimes we we don't say what we um don't like about something right um maybe women are more open to express their feelings or the way they feel men are not that much of course, times are changing and now men are more willing to express their feelings. But I mean, regarding work, it's much better to, to say, uh, provide opinions and to say the, the way that you prefer things to be done. Of course, uh, we also discussed that, I mean, the uh, companies, they provide guidelines and everybody has to follow. It doesn't matter if you are from one or another generation, but yeah, it's possible to provide feedback or to say things openly, right? Mm -hmm. Good, let's see. Um, there are not many words here, I guess. Let's see. No, I don't see any. Okay, the other two paragraphs are going to be for... Uh, Fernando, is it possible for you? Not possible. Francisco Eduardo, is it possible for you? Not possible. Okay, let me just check then. Jose Wilfredo. Yes, it's true. Okay, um, take me in, take me and my dad. He has decades, 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 decades of work experience under his belt and understands that tell, talking to customer and colleagues on the phone and meeting with them in person is important when Building personal long lasting, lasting relationships. I, however, spent my formal, formative years communicating 
through text message and emails. I find the I find the format quicker and more efficient, similar to 65% of generation Z. Just as there is not right or wrong work style. There is not right or wrong method of communication. Show your direct reports that you are willing to step up of you comfort zone. Admit them halfway. Compromise is key to finding a no judgmental middle ground. So try to think on your differences as learning opportunities. Good. What Sample. do you get from this? Uh, oh, well. Okay. Uh, the, until that? Yeah, oh, that, that would be. be. Uh, no, okay. that would be. Good. Okay, perfect. Um, the, and those paragraphs explain how you have to communicate with your colleagues and how important is to speak. Uh, well, uh, yeah, how important is uh, make a good conversation with the customer. Um, and also, um, I guess that you can do this just for um, enjoy your job. Or maybe, yeah, I guess that is only for that, for enjoy your job. And because when you enjoy what, what are you doing? you uh, do that with any effort and also um, is healthy for you. Very good. So yes, definitely. So it's a very good idea to, to speak, right? As we say before, but also to understand that there are many ways of communicating. So, and there is no right or wrong. We just need to be open to the way that they are going to say something and what they are going to say. And then uh, respect on that one, agree on what they're going to do. And that's it, right? OK, let's check some words. Decades, what is that? Ten years. Ten years, very good, nice. And then we have, let's see. Mm. Uh, relationship, what is that? When you establish a different relation with another person. Very good. Uh -huh. A link with someone. Very good, a link with someone, nice. And let's see. There is no other, I guess. So it says, for example, you might switch between methods of communication depending on the goal of the conversation. Exchange emails for a faster, more efficient approach, but meet face-to-face -face when the conversation calls for added intimacy and relationship building. So yes, I mean, if something is very important, maybe it's better for you to call, but it's something that you need somebody else to know. It's like an advertisement or anything like that. Uh, it can be via email. Number three says respect boundaries. Do you remember what is boundaries? Limits. Limits. Limits, borders. Maybe Five. borders. Uh -huh. Good, good. That is it. Very nice. So this one is going to be for Danny. <laughs> Respect boundaries. A wider representation of age groups at work has introduced a new belief and values into the office. Taboo topics of the past, like diversity and inclusion, mental, mental, mental health, and gender roles are becoming widely discussed in professional settings. Just like an individual's race, ethnicity, gender, sex, sexual orientation, religion, this uh, ability, class, personality, 
and educational background will impact how comfortable they are talking about this topic at work. So will their age and their upbringing, 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 <laughs> upbringing. <laughs> Good, what did you get from this? Um, I think um, the way um, the most um, the most uh, diversity in ages or, or group of ages are in the work and in this in the same way there will be a lot of um, belief and the way to see the things, different ways to see the things. Um, I don't know, diversity is for me the, the, the word that, that resume all, all this, because in, in this is, um, is, the, is the key to, to, to look and think in, in different way and to accept the, the other person, right? And no matter where, the, where that person came from, right? something like that or his or he a role is for is for a gender exclusive um i don't know all the all the things that uh, make us think different okay perfect so yes actually i mean we know that it's important to understand differences between generation. Also, we know that we do not have to stereotype. But this number three actually is very important. I mean, there are boundaries, there are limits. And depending on the generation you're talking with, uh, then the limits are going to be different, right? So, for example, he says, right, uh, a wider representation of age groups at work has introduced new beliefs and values into the office. So everything the world is changing and also the office is changing the work right and it says taboo to topics in the past like diversity and inclusion mental health and gender roles are becoming widely discussed in professional settings so in the past for example you know that was very difficult to say women should have the same rights or women should have the same salary or things like that now i mean it's something that is very normal the same happens with other things like uh, race, ethnicity, gender, sex, sexual orientation, religion, disability, class, personality, educational background. So everything that is important, but of course there are still limits. So we need to be respectful. For example, we still, I believe yesterday or today before we were speaking that, or somebody said that is kind of, um, not a good idea to speak about politics, right? Or about religion, at least in Latin America is kind of not a good idea. You can get in trouble because of that one. So that is a boundary, that is a limit that we need to be careful if you are going to move into that one, right? More at work that is like a, a work environment is not like friendly, friendly. I mean, it's not that you're going to have very good friends with the people, but you have to have a very good relationship with everybody. So boundaries are there for that one. Let's see some words. Uh, taboo, what is that? It's like a belief. Okay, I believe something that is forbidden right you cannot talk about or do something about that one. a taboo is not permitted okay yeah let's see i don't think there is any other here uh let's finish this one and then we're gonna check the attendance yeah it's not that long well actually it's kind of long yeah maybe it's better for us to Oh, well, there is a word here. Yeah, I remember. Upbringing. What is upbringing?
Okay, upbringing is like the way that when you are a kid, for example, uh, when your parents provide you directions, you need to do this in this way. So if you grew up with the way, with the method, with the belief of doing something in certain way, it's kind of difficult to change that one, okay? So that is it. Okay, we're gonna stop a little while and then we're gonna check the attendance, my friends. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Good. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Eh, Roxana Ibet Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. And Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, perfect, got you. Okay, so let's continue with this little reading. Okay, so. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, this one is going to be for uh, Maria Alejandra. Is it possible for you? Okay. okay. I started in, in Gerhard. Yeah, Gerhard. Uh, Gerhard explained that research has shown younger generation tend to be more progressive about social issues as well as more comfortable talking about topics that were previously considered taboo in the workplace. She told me the will, the will, will, willingness. A willingness of younger employees to accept and normalize the discussion of these important topics in resulting in a decrease in the stigma that has traditional sound roads. Surrounder. Surrounder. Talking about them at work. It's also important to keep in mind that how you employees feel about this topic is going to vary. It's not and, necessary. Uh, uh, go ahead. Okay. It's not necessary for every every person to agree, but it is but it is important for them to understand why the organization plays plays a high value of the issues be being discussed 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 discussed. Very good. What do you get from this? Mm. Maybe that in this moment or that uh, the younger generation uh, have a more or accept a different social taboo or uh, that other topic thing that the previous generation killed though because for that difference or that person with tall don't feel comfortable when said or is a uh, don't accept these attitudes or that characteristics for the different persons to don't stay in that 
or in base at the normal or the social or the la sociedad? Society. The society say that is normal or nor or or correct or not correct and and uh -huh. Okay, very good. Very nice. So yes, actually, uh, well, generations has been changing everything, right? So all the new generations that are more open to speak about different topics that maybe in the past they were taboo. And uh, I mean, that's going to make things easier so we can discuss about many things. There are always some boundaries, but there are less boundaries now than we had before. So, and at the end, actually, says it's not necessary for every person to agree, but it's important for them to understand. Okay, so that is very important. So to understand, to to respect, we discuss that as well, and then to listen. And good thing is that now we are able to speak about many things. Let's see if we can find some words. Um, what is the willingness? Okay, when you are willing to do something, right? When you have, uh, when you want to, that is it. Committed, you feel committed? It's like committed, very good, nice. What is surrounded? Okay, something that is around the idea in this case, right? So that is it. And there is another, I guess. Nope. Okay, the other two paragraphs are going to be for Heidi. Okay. Particularly when it comes to race and gender, one social trend reports from Pew research conducted in 2020 shows that there are some measurable patterns around the belief different generations hold in the US when it comes to race relations. The report states Gen Zers and millennials are about equally likely to say that blacks are treated less fairly than whites in this country. Probably two thirds of Gen Zers and millennials say this, compared with about half of Gen Xers and boomers are smaller shares among the silent generation. Additionally, according to same report, about six in 10 Gen Xers, 59% says, forms or online profiles should include adding gender options compared with half of millennials, about four in 10 Gen Xers and boomers, 40% and 37% respectively. And roughly a third of those, the silent generation, 32%. Okay, what did you get from this? Uh, the Gen, Gen Zers and millennials, uh, they think that black people is, is treated in a, in, in a different way. Right. Yeah, uh, actually that's been changing, right? In the past, nobody speaks about that one. So it was mm -hmm. something that was there hidden, but now people is more open to say that one and to, to express their feelings and to agree on some changes, right? So mm, Yeah, maybe that used to happen, but not anymore. That's, that's not permitted or allowed to treat something, someone different way. That is it, very good. So actually that's what it says, particularly when it comes to race and gender. So there are some trends, there are patterns that they are like uh, saying that they, there should be a change, right? And that blacks are treated less fairly than whites, at least in the US. And um, 
And there are some percentages on how that happens. Of course, the silent generation has the 32%, which is the less, right? Because they are more traditional, they don't like changes. So they prefer, maybe even if they agree, they prefer not, not to say something, right? Right. Good, let's check some words here. Fairly, what is that? Fair. It's the opposite of unfair. Okay, very good. Yeah, fairly is like, uh, when you fair, when it's uh, somebody is treated with justice, right? In the same way of any other. Roughly, what is roughly? Art. Okay, very good. Yeah, so it's like, mm -hmm. very nice, good. It's like a, a, a little bit more, it's like the difference is not that much, right? So, okay, and I don't think there is any other. Okay, the next two paragraphs are going to be four, let's see. How so swing, is it possible for you to read? Not possible. Ada Cáceres. The most, teacher? Yeah, please. The most challenging fit you may face of a manager of both older and younger employees will involve respecting the varied boundaries of each of your team member while unfolding your your own set values, boundaries and gown rules. Mm -hmm. Okay, in order to create the king kind of the kind of environment in which every person felt willing to ask for help, share their best ideas and take a risk. Gerard say you need to prioritize psychological safari. The people come to this conversation with the different experience and varying levels of the willing of angels. She told me the role the manager is to provide ongoing opportunities to have the discussion, to not the first people to particularly point uh, of view on the check a box. Good, what do you get from this? It's uh, the most um, challenging, it's a, 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 it's a desafiant. The, it's challenging, huh? Uh-huh, the challenge is a, a challenge for the, the manager and the people is a younger, uh, is a, or the old man is, um, is, is, is important in the order to create the, key, the environment. Okay, very good, perfect. So actually, this is something that is very true. So the most challenging that you will face as a manager of a team that has a lot of generations is not only uh, understand, listen to different generations, but also to bring your and the company's values to them. So they, uh, we as a team, we agree on some things, we uh, share the same objectives, things like that. So actually that is very, very different. You might to, to be uh, working with three different kinds of generation that you have your own values, and then you have to, bring the values of the company, of course. It's, it's not that easy, definitely. Let's check some vocabulary. I don't think there are many here. What is a risk? Uh, something dangerous. Something dangerous, very good, nice. 
and there is no other like this. Okay. The next two paragraphs, uh, Marcus. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, she uh, she at uh, star. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Okay, I start. Okay, she asked when navigating these kind of challenging topics. It can be helpful for managers to ground the conversation in a discussion of how the issues are relevant to the organization values and overall mission. For example, when it comes to diversity and inclusion, there are important legal, moral, and strategic perspectives to consider. It's not, <clears throat> it's not necessary for every person in the organization to agree or share the same priorities, but it's important for them to understand why the organization places high value on issues being discussed. Well, what do you get from this? Mm. Okay, let me see. <clears throat> Um, the understand that it's important um, for the managers to discuss about the issues, the, the important or relevant issues in the organization, and talk about the values and the mission. Um, also, it's important to consider all the perspectives from all the employees. Um, Consider that all the people don't think the same way. So there are diversity and and the manager have to <clears throat> include all that for the ways of thinking and all the people those don't know how to be agreed with all with all the employees. So it's important to um take that in consideration that there are there are diversity of ways of thinking. Very good, perfect. Thank you. So that is it, right? So and uh, yeah, we need to consider in mind everything that we're doing. I mean, everything that we need to analyze on that one. We have different generations. We need to listen to them. We need to understand them. Also, we need. Uh, to check our own values and our own perspective. Also bring the values of the company, but then also we need to be careful about some legal, moral, and some uh, strategic uh, according to the company that we're working for. So it's a whole thing. It's, it's a, a little bit complex, right? It's not just a matter for you to listen to people and, and that's it. So there are many things that should be considered. And uh, at the end, as Marcus was saying, maybe it's not important that everybody share the same feeling, the same perspective, the same point of view, but they need to understand why the organization is aiming to these kind of values or this kind of method or this kind of behavior. Uh, that is important. So they understand why this is something what they need to do. Let's check some... Uh, other vocabulary here. Let's see. I don't think there are many here. No, actually, I didn't find any. Okay, the last part. Uh, Giselle, is it possible for you? Not possible. Jose Osmin. Juan Miguel Brand. Okay, let's see. Gerard suggested facilitating discussions about the shared norms that work best for your team, rather than defaulting to the way things have always been done or, fav or favoring the preferences of one age group over another. You can, al you can also try to create change at the organizational level by talking to your employer about developing initiatives that encourage both older and younger generations 
to connect and share their expertise, such as mutual mentoring programs. Good. What do you get from this? Uh, it talks about share uh, norms, like uh, the text say this, uh, but <coughs> sorry. Um, I'm not only for sharing this kind of norms. Uh, I think one uh, situation that work best in order to uh, um, to como relacionar relate uh, in order to relate one generation with another is like uh, um, workshops, but um, where the expertise of the older generation uh, is shared with the new ones. And maybe the, the knowledge of the new ones about tech, uh, for example, will be uh, shared with the oldest, in order to uh, um, complement the two generations or the or or the all the all generations that you have in, in your company um, in 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 the place that that I work uh, this work best this work as the as the best thing very good perfect thank you so yes, I mean, whenever it's possible, not always is possible, we can discuss the norms, policies, procedures, methods with everybody, right? So we agree and mm -hmm. get feedback and things like that. Sometimes, of course, it's not possible, but whenever it's possible, it's a very good way for everybody uh, that they feel that they are part of the team and that they are able to uh, to agree yeah. at least with the things that are on the company, right? Uh I, I didn't told you, but uh, obviously these kind of workshops are related with all the beliefs, all, all the company beliefs in order to uh, get a solid environment, okay? Uh, obviously, uh, like, like I was trying to tell you, uh, to relate the experience, uh, of, of the older people with the technology or the knowledge of the new ones. Very good, uh -huh. that is it, right? So yes, I mean, everything that we're checking here, I mean, as, as Ana Claudia was saying before, is not only for the world, but for everything, right? We can understand the world a little bit better if we take in consideration everything that we're learning here. Uh, let's see if there is uh, if there is any work. Mm, I don't think so. Let's see. Okay. So the next one, number four, don't play favorites. The first two paragraphs are going to be for uh, Fernando. Hey, teacher. Don't play favorites. Finally, to create a culture in which people of all ages can be vulnerable and learn from one another, where hard advice that managers create an inclusive decision-making process that encourage open dialogue. During meetings, go the extra mile to make sure every voice is heard and considered. While this is typically a good practice, those leading multi-generational teams may face unique challenges. For instance, for instance, one study of more than 60, 6,000 6, or 6,000 millennials revealed that 50% uh, of participants questioned their capacity for success in the workplace, making them twice as worried about their skill set than older generations. Good, what do you get from this? Uh, uh, 
I said, good, that's nice. That manager create um, create process that include all people, no matter their age, and all people can feel value. And that, that situation encourage these people to participate, to, to do their job as the best way. And I don't know, maybe, maybe encourage that people to go give the, the extra mile in their job. Okay, very good. So yes, I mean, this is uh, something that sometimes happens, right? Or we, uh, we are able to see that happens in the companies and that the people they have favorites. Sometimes also we misunderstand that one. Maybe one person relate better with other person, but doesn't mean that they are the favorite. The problem is that if they're friends and they are not friends with the rest of the other people, just colleagues, of course, um, it may be something there, right? I mean, so it's, it's not good. We need to be fair. We need to be around everybody and understand everybody so everything goes well. Okay, so um, let me just check if there are some words. Vulnerable, what is vulnerable? Very easy to hurt. Okay, easy to get hurt, good. Let me see what else. I don't see any other. Okay. And this part is going to be for, let's see, Roxana. Mm, in my experience? Yep. Okay, in my experience, these fears can result in the desire to prove ourselves, especially in group settings. Myself, Sorry, myself and my peers often share our opinions and perspective without necessarily being asked to. I have also seen or desired to be heard me, me since what? Misinterpreted. Misinterpreted, misinterpreted has arrogance by more seasoned works, workers and managers. Members of older generation are something quick to overlook us, seeing our lack of experience. Citing. Citing, our lack of experience. Expertise. Expertise, sorry. And the other part as well, instead. Okay, instead of per 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 <laughs> perpetuating. Perpetuating, thank you. Instead of perpetuating and us versus them, dynamic at work, let's change the narrative moving forward. Okay, what did you get from this? Almost nothing, did you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was, uh, okay. Uh, it's no big deal. I mean, let's let's just read again. It says, in my experience, this first can result in the desire to prove ourselves. So we're talking about fears. We are afraid. And sometimes it says actually at the end of the paragraph that uh, when there are other people that they have more experience, when they have... Uh, four, five, six years in the company sometimes, and we are the new ones. Actually, what happens to you, uh, you were telling us that they were looking at you in a, a very bad way and you felt that that was not good. So that is definitely not good, right? So it doesn't matter the experience. It doesn't matter the age. There should be like everybody is the same. We're going to help you. Welcome to the team. Everything should be that way. So let's check some vocabularies. What is to desire? Anybody? Anyone? 
when you something, want something. Uh -huh. uh, something that you want. Uh, when you really, really, really want, right? Like the sound. Yeah. Uh, really, really want. Or really, okay. That's another thing. Okay. So, and then let's see what another is. What is to be misinterpreted? Misinterpretation. Bad interpretation. Bad interpretation. When you don't understand anything, right? An idea, a situation, something like that. And then it says by more seasoned workers. What is that more seasoned workers? ¿Qué quieres, hijo? ¿Y la botellita? The bottle, the bottle. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. So worker seekers may be person that company uh, employers by one season, for example, Christmas. Okay. So actually it's not that one. Actually, when you say more season workers, it's like with more experience. That's that, that means that they have worked more, more seasons, right? So that is it. So with more experience, oh, they have been working there in the company for more time. And this one is citing. What is to cite? Okay, citing comes from cite, and that is like whenever you say, for example, as Wilfredo said, and then we say what Wilfredo said, we are doing a cite, okay? Uh, and in this case, what is the meaning of this one is that people sometimes they cite our lack of experience. I mean, we don't have enough experience and people they point at that very often no but he's a new one. Oh, he doesn't have that experience he doesn't know anything so that is not good right of course expertise is like experience right the experience that you have already and there is no other oh well yeah no, that is it uh, let's see uh, this one is going to be for let's see Maria Alejandra, these two paragraphs, please. If you notice this pattern unfolding in your own meeting, or you notice yourself enacting these biases, biases, biases change your approach and the next time you become frustrated with your younger employees for behind all the spot, cash yourself rather than shooting them down, give them a space to respectfully demonstrate, demonstrate their abilities by asking questions and encouraging them to win. Waking. Huh? Waking. Like, like, like white. Like white. If an older word is quick to dim, dim, dismiss. dismiss a younger team member, address is by suggesting the younger team member speak up in the moment. For example, mm -hmm. you might say, Michelle. Did you have an idea you want to add? Follow up with the older team member privately and remind them that even if someone has less experience, their insights are will come um value uh, uh, value this advice goes both ways. If you see a younger team member making a assume, uh, assumption about their more seasoned college, as then to colleague, as then to change their behavior, remind remind your team that diversity of thought helps increase the scale of the new insights and 
allow organization to make their decisions and complete tasks more successfully. Okay, oh. what did you get from this? <laughs> um, I don't know. I think that the, when the, the group or that um, uh, is a younger team is more probably that the persons uh, feel a difference uh, and Feelings. Feelings. Uh -huh. Feelings. Uh, because in different situations, you you have a frustration. You have a, you don't have a appropriate abilities. But when you I don't know stay in that the group and your boss say that you or is probably you at um at a suggestions or at the other, you don't breathe or you don't, yeah, you try to uh, say what do you think for that is improved for that different thing, because um, when say that, maybe that in size is when you don't see what the other person sees, what is at the important to do or, try to see around all the ideas to make more to the uh, panorama. Uh, landscape. <laughs> uh, and the landscape for the, the situation or the task or the um, a project or like this. And, Maybe when you say this or uh, around the landscape, you have more opportunities to the employees and uh, what you decide uh, more successfully or that have a good or complete the goals. Okay, perfect. perfect. So yes, actually this is um, something that we need to, to consider. I mean, it's very important what it says that of course we need to, to make them, uh, everybody participate. And it might be happening that some people are like, somebody is saying something that you believe is not according to the values. So you need to, to approach and, and change that kind of behavior right and the interesting thing is that it might happen in both ways i mean we have discussed that probably the people that they work in the company for six ten years they see the other one the new ones in a bad way but it might happen also that the new ones they might have a, a bad perception of the old one they might say Oh, this is too old. They are doing things in the incorrect way. So yes, it's better for you as a manager to bring everything together so you agree on what is going to happen. Very good. Okay, it says if you notice these patterns, uh, what is a pattern? That is the first question. And uh, repeat, like repeats, like a trend, right? It's like a trend. Okay, and then it says unfolding. What is unfolding? Anything that is enrolled. <laughs> okay, enrolled in progress. In progress. Very like good. Uh -huh. No, I think that maybe like expand something, but not in this way. Or, or, or yeah. Uh, yeah, it might be. Uh -huh. It might be like something that is going through, right? Okay, so let's see. If there is another outspoken. Okay, what is that?
like open. Like open, yeah. Open. Okay, very good. Uh, let's see, and it says here, this is very important, rather than shutting them down, give them space to respectfully demonstrate their abilities by asking questions, encouraging them to wake in. So we don't say, don't say that one. We say, uh, why don't you say that in a different way? Tell us what you want to say. And the word here is waking. What is waking? Okay, waking is like contribute. So we're going to encourage them to participate, to contribute to anything that they, they're doing, right? Uh, let's see, what is to dismiss? To lose something. To lose something, it might be, yeah. So for example, when you have a, a meeting, right? And you say to everybody, you are dismissed. So it's like, you can go, right? Uh, let's see. What other? There was another one. Teacher, dismiss yep. is different to fire. Yeah, because dismiss is like you can go back to your office, right? Fire is like go to your home and don't come back anymore. Okay. Okay. So dismiss is in the moment. You can go from here, right? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. I guess we have seen all of the other words. Okay, this is going to be for, let's see. Uh, Giselle, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Good. Uh, the one? Yeah, please. Just that paragraph. It will be that one and the other one. Okay. When we move away from the mindset that generational interactions are a win-lose pro proposition, the possibility emerges that intergenerational collaborations can result in greater learning and success for all involved. Earhart said, every generation has something to teach and something to learn. We all have experiences and knowledge to share. Instead of perpetuating an us versus them, dynamic at work, let's change the narrative moving forward. What did you get from that? That we can learn uh, from each other. Uh, that maybe um, like, like the second paragraph said, it's not a us versus them. That can change. We can learn from from the others and we can teach to the others too. Very good, perfect. So that is it, right? I mean, it's a matter for you to, to have a team. I mean, that is the perfect life. When you have a team uh, where everybody's participating, when everybody's different, but they can uh, provide a very good income to any processes or anything that we're discussing. Of course, that doesn't happen in real life. I mean, sometimes there are some people that they don't relate to each other or they don't agree on the way that uh, we're doing things. So that happens. And if you are the leader of that team, of course, it's your thing to manage the way, everything in the way that works for everybody, right? Uh, let's see, mindset, what is a mindset? It's like a, a, the way that I think about something or the way that I, someone, the, the idea that has someone about something. Very good, that is it. It's like the way that you think about anything, right? We don't have any other here, okay? So the last part is going to be for Marcus. Okay. Um... I start from instead. I know there are ways. Okay, okay. There are ways to bridge the generational gap. 
It begins with communication, humility, and a deeper curiosity about the strengths and limitation of our team members and ourselves. It begins with the acceptance that we are fundamentally different people with equally valuable, valuable insights to offer. It ends with respect and understanding. It ends with progress. Okay, what did you get from this? Okay, um, uh, I understand that in order to, to bridge the generational gap, we'll have to, to communicate in, in a good way with our team, being humble and yeah. Um, get to know more about the strength and limitation that all our members from our team have. So we can, we can know all the strengths and weakness and we can understand that everyone in the team is totally different, but we have the, the same values and, or the same objectives and goals. So we have to, to work together and consider all, all the difference. And yeah, that's. <laughs> okay, perfect. That was very good, Marcus. So that is it at the end. I mean, we need to, to make it possible, right? So everybody's different. I mean, here in the class, we're different. At home, even when you are with your own family, you are different. Okay, so the last part is actually very important. Okay, respect and understanding. And if we have both of those, we have good communication. If we uh, get everybody involved in the procedures, progress is what we're going to have. Definitely is a very, very good thing. Good, and that is it for this one. So, and let me just check. We're gonna see a video. And then you are going to tell me what did you get from the video? It's kind of interesting, this one. It's very short. Okay. So as usual with the videos, we're going to provide comments, opinions, and uh, anything that you may want to say about it. Let's check if you got it because it's like a regular conversation. My name is Misha and today we're going to meet with three different generations. We're going to meet a me with a member from the traditionalist generation, the baby boomers, and Gen X. And I'm going to give them a couple different scenarios on things that could happen in the workplace and we're going to hear what they have to say and how they would respond. Okay, your first question is, you decide your work at a specific firm is no longer valid or interesting. What do you do? Let's hear from the baby boomer. Well, I would look around and take some classes in the evening and start getting some other possibilities so that I could maybe switch job in the future. The traditionalist? I, I would uh, endeavor to make the job more interesting. I'd do things to make the job more interesting. I would work to make it more I continue to work in the same job, just working to make it interesting. And Generation X? I would look for a different job. I'd put my feelers out on, on the internet and look around for, for different jobs that are out there. Okay, your next question. One's resume lists multiple jobs since they have graduated from college. What does that make you think about that person? Generation X. Uh, that's people need to switch jobs and it works out that way to keep your life interesting and to di have different opportunities and to move up you have to you have to move around to move up that's just a fact of business nowadays and the traditionalist uh, the, the same question is this that I would uh, that's like a boomer and I believe a guy should be a boomer should move along where the stuff is good I have no problem with the guy having multiple work before he comes to work for me. And the baby boomer? 
Well, I've seen my own father and my own sons move to different jobs, so I wouldn't have anything against that. I think that would be natural and normal for people to move around. And finally, your boss asks you to attend an important business conference, but you already have plans to host a party at your house that night. What do you do? Traditionalist? I would, I would go with the boss. I would absolutely not. Her family would always come second with me. Gener Generation X. I would uh, have to tell my boss I couldn't make it because the I had other plans. Dinner parties are important too. And baby boomer. And I would maybe speak to my boss if there wasn't a way to maybe change it. But if he said no, I really need you to do it, I would just say yep, okay, and I'd have my reschedule the dinner party. Thank you very much for all of your responses. So in conclusion, we can determine from what we just saw that generations are different and that each generation has different ideas, ideas and values. And that exactly what all the research says is they are generalizations about the generation and that not every single person is the same and that each generation is brought up differently and has different ways of determining their outcomes depending on their life experiences. Okay, what did you get from that one? Any comments, opinion? Actually, she made a resume at the end, right? That every generation has different values and acts according to, to their own values. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, what did you feel about the, how did you analyze the way that they answered in a different way about the same question? For example, for, with a party, that was kind of interesting. For example, the uh, Generation X, I guess, uh, he was saying, okay, if I have a party at nine and my boss told me to go to a meeting, I would say, no, I have to party. I cannot change that one. But the other one, uh, the baby boomer said, no, I will go and ask if it's possible to change the meeting. And if it's not possible, I will cancel the party. So different approaches, right? What do you think about the way they answer the questions? And the other one said that he will cancel the party and go to, with his boss, right? Exactly, workaholic. Do you mm -hmm. remember that we say that one, right? They are workaholic, right? Mm -hmm. So there are different levels that are important for that. So that is interesting. On the other hand, maybe baby boomers are more uh, com como comprometidos, committed, committed, committed with uh, their works or in general with the task. And the younger people are more open mind, more in, I, I don't know, maybe they feel like a free more than the others with different um, tasks. Okay, very good, perfect. Yeah, actually that is what it, it felt, right? Good, thank you. Any other opinion or comment about that? For example, there was another question. The first one, I guess it was that, what happens if you don't feel valuable for that one? So the traditionalist, he said, no, we work more. I will, I mean, do many other things, right? Stay more hours. The baby boomer said, oh, well, I will research, study, check what I need to learn. And the other one, the younger, he said, well, I will look for another job. I will look for what other positions are available. So in mind that one, how different is that one? So that's why they said, do you remember that there was a part that said that uh, they are very loyal, they workaholic, and the other ones are not loyal. So that is exactly what happens there. Yeah. 
Any other comment, opinion? No other. Okay, so let's finish then. So I'm going to check the attendance. Remember that today is the first class of the last week. So please try to move on. And by next Monday or Tuesday, we have to finish everything on the platform. So that is very, very important. So let's check. Down, teacher. Yeah, I have seen that you, you're done with everything. Some of you have finished everything. So that is fine. At this point, you can finish if you want. Okay. So Ada, Susana Cáceres, Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Good. Irene Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Maria Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. For Roberto is the 101 of today, if you want to stay. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejia. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernandez. Perfect. So my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you rest very well. And of course, see you tomorrow. Dream in English. Thank you, Thank you teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.